Season 2, Episode 19, The Story on Page 1. In a minute, babe. I'm just reading every high school newspaper in America to see if I'm mentioned. Oh my God! Meg Griffin, you are so sued. I have to give credit to Luke Perry in this episode. I've never been a huge fan of the American show Beverly Hills 90210, but he was a great team sport, voicing the character himself and participating in the self-deprecating humor regarding his sexuality. Brian even mentions... You can't just print lies about people. Luke Perry has a wife and son. And he was in fact married with children at the time of this episode. I highly doubt the man was ever a homosexual, but he even if he were, I mean he could do much better than Peter Griffin. No offense. You know what's good for getting wine out? Sex with another man. Whoa, 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 look. If you're gay, that's cool, but I am not. And even if I was, come on, I'm Luke Perry. I can get a much better gay guy than you. This is old news. There have been scandals in politics ever since Thomas Jefferson. Oh, oh hold on, hold on. Honey, let's get all the kids in this. There are a few dark jokes in this one. Luckily, McFollin doesn't linger for too long. Sally Hemings was an enslaved African-American woman who was owned by Thomas Jefferson and is widely believed to have had several of his children. The deeply unjust and dehumanizing nature of her enslavement subjected her to a life of exploitation, lack of agency and profound inequality. Sally's story is just one of many, many of the abused women at the hands of their slave owners. Meg doesn't get into college. Who knows what kind of future she'll have? You ain't getting this meat. This is my meat. Shut up. I found this meat. Bum Fights is a controversial documentary released in 2002 that followed a similar exploitative concept as the video series of the same name. The film depicted homeless people participating in demeaning stunts and fights in exchange for money. It faced widespread backlash for its insensitivity and ethical concerns, serving as a stark example of the limits of shock entertainment. As for Meg, it may be an unpopular opinion, but I've always thought Meg was pretty good looking. She's not drop dead gorgeous, but she's certainly not unattractive as far as character design, nor is she fat. I just never connect with the Meg is ugly bandwagon. I don't see it. Besides, Mila Kunis' voice is incredibly sexy. Anyway, that's just one man's opinion. Do you feel me, Brian? Do you feel me inside of you? I'm telling you, Dark Side of the Moon totally syncs up with The Wizard of Oz. Really? Chan Doherty told me that once, but I thought she was just being a bitch. It has been long said that The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd syncs up perfectly with The Wizard of Oz. The conspiracy theory suggests that if you start playing the Pink Floyd album at the same time as you start watching the movie, certain moments in the album's music appear to match up with specific scenes in the film. For instance, certain lyrics coincide with character movements, events or visual effects in the movie, though it has never been confirmed that this was the band's intention. Far away, across the field, on the iron bell. Really? Chan Doherty told me that once, but I thought she was just being a bitch. Shannon Doherty gained a reputation for being difficult to work with on the set of Beverly Hills 90210. Reports and anecdotes from cast and crew suggested instances of conflicts, disagreements and clashes with fellow actors and production staff. Her reputation as being challenging to collaborate with became a notable aspect of her public image during that time. But I personally just don't feel comfortable calling Anna Woman up. a bitch. Why are you such a mega bitch? Because I can be. A lot of these famous types lead secret lives that we don't even know about. Like Ricky Martin. How did we get here? There is nothing out there to suggest there is any connection between Ricky Martin and the singer Jewel. While both are accomplished musicians, they come from different music genres and backgrounds. Ricky Martin is primarily known for his pop and Latin music, while Jewel is known for folk and country music. I guess that's what makes this so darn hilarious and unexpected. One minute to curtain, Jewel. 
What makes it more legit is that in the year 2000, Ricky Martin was very much a closeted homosexual and wouldn't tell the world about his sexuality until 2010. It was probably much easier just to pretend to be dual in the year 2000. There are a lot. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? on the rack! Now Meg needs something that's gonna pull those kids away from their rock'em sock'em robots and their, and their spirographs and their Moby Grape and their 90210. Being on this campus really brings back memories. <gasps> Cowards! Excuse me, we're uh, here to see the dean. Nobody, nobody can see the great Oz, not nobody, not no how. I'm sorry, can I help you? Got milk? That's a funny one. Oh, and uh, I got you. Here, diagonally. Pretty, Pretty sneaky, sneaky sis. sis. That one's also funny. You could get a part-time job. Yeah, I had one when I was in high school. Oh, oh, That'll be twenty-seven fifty. Tired of being small. I wish I was big. My days in college were so exciting. This one time, the National Guard came and shot some of my friends. Uh, Mayor West asked me to do this. Uh oh. Of course, of course you realize, realize this, this means war. war.